All right. Uh, thanks again to everyone for coming, and thanks for, to Chris and Priya and Justin all for great opening remarks. Um, I'm Chrissy, for those of you that don't know me. I'm fairly new to the agency, a little less than a year on the digital finance team and really charged with uh, what we call portfolio acceleration, which is using digital finance and other tools to help accelerate the work of our own USAID uh, other bureaus, mainly for now, including the Bureau for Food Security, but also looking at humanitarian response as well as Power Africa. Um, so this event is intended to be celebratory, at least for me, uh, after a year of working on this. So I hope you guys are enjoying breakfast and networking. Um, it's really just kind of a chance to bring everyone together that's working in this field and at this intersection. and. Uh, getting getting the word out about the guide. So I'm going to do like a brief demonstration because I did notice last night that it, uh, despite our best efforts, it's now 70 pages. <laughs> um, so a brief walkthrough might be helpful. Um, I, w I did want to start off with, and Priya mentioned this, but we've, this is actually our second iteration, so a lot of you saw the first one, and we don't expect it to be final or perfect, but we do expect it to be a living document that's something that you all can use. Um, get out to the field and see how it works and give us a lot of feedback. So we're hope hopefully the conversation will continue. Um, so I did want to thank a few people. They've already been thanked maybe, but just to reiterate, this was a long process with field trips to Uganda, Tanzania, Ghana, and Haiti. And then we've actually since been back to Uganda and Ghana to field test it. Uh, so from MSTAR, Carrie Average, and Joyce Lehman were both vital to that. And from USAID, from our cross-bureau team, it was really uh, Nandini Hariharshra, Liz Dybald, and Harsha Gadali that um, were critical in making this happen. And I also wanted to briefly recognize CGAP's uh, Digital Finance Readiness Plus framework, which was a key uh, inspiration and kind of provided the structure for the guide. Um, so there's many others that were involved, and hopefully we caught you in the acknowledgments, if not mentioned here. Um, so uh, this, I really love this graphic. We spent a lot of time on it. <laughs> and it's a little hard to see from here, but it's in the guide. And it's just showing that kind of what Justin was saying, that this isn't about solving all of the problems in agriculture, but as we're, we're moving towards our the future high-level goals of increasing uh, agricultural incomes and reducing malnutrition. We hit roadblocks along the way. We need a lot of different tools to solve them, and digital finance offers some of those tools, but not all of them. Um, so this guide offers one approach um, for, for overcoming some of these challenges, which uses the value chain analysis and really these Feed the Future indicators as the starting point um, for accelerating results towards our ultimate goal of sustainably reducing global poverty. And we wrote it mainly keeping in mind our USAID mission staff and our implementing partners working in the field. Um, so there is a lot of USAID-ish language in there. Um, but we hope that it will be broadly applicable at the same time. And it is also intended as one piece of work that will help to support USAID's procurement bulletin, which encourages the use, uh, use of electronic payments when possible. Hopefully you have all heard of it. And so we actually put some procurement language in the back of the guide to help our USAID staff. So we still hear, and we've heard of it this morning, but we do still hear sometimes people push back, like why digital? Does it really have to be digital? And it doesn't have to be, um, but the focus here on digital is due to the evidence that we've seen that digital infrastructure is critical for overcoming many of the challenges with traditional financial services that have the left the majority of the population in the areas where we work unbanked or underbanked. So I would say we see four main areas. We can probably name more, but where we really see the value of digital. So one, I mean, in reducing the loss due to the theft and corruption. Two, and in increasing the safety and traceability of payments. Three, and extending services outside of traditional urban centers. And four, and creating opportunities for new business models. So one of the um, most cited examples is Mshori in Kenya, which is for the first time really allowing people to get really quick, small, on-demand loans based on their savings behavior, um, as opposed to the more traditional loan process. 
So two um, randomized control trials that really provide some of the background of this evidence um, is the study in 2011 in Kenya that showed that um, M-Pesa users were able to withstand financial shocks more uh, easily than those that were non-mobile money users. And um, another randomized control trial in Niger that found that those that received their conditional cash transfers via mobile uh, saved up to 75% on costs such as transport fees and were able to use those savings to purchase a greater variety of foodstuffs related to nutrition as well as to grow a greater variety of crops. Um, so this slide, which is in your, the booklet as well, is just to recognize that this is one approach. And we do uh, recognize that creating a sustainable rural financial services ecosystem requires many complementary approaches, each feeding off of each other. So while this really uh, focuses on, uh, on our programs, leveraging uh, digital payments for our specific services. We hope that this will create a cycle where our programs are spurring demand for additional services and signaling to the private sector that there should be increased investment, which will then allow us to use maybe more complex services such as crop insurance in the future. So there's, uh, the guide offers a step-by-step -step approach. Um, just again, it's one, one approach that uh, hopefully will work for a lot of our projects, which starts with identifying value chain challenges. Second, encourages you to assess gaps in, in existing services. And third, helps you assess the maturity of your digital finance uh, ecosystem. So the guide really encourages the reader to walk through all of these steps and to identify services without allowing the state of the market to get in the way, as you think because then the intervention types later on uh, show we can offer, even in nascent markets, we can use creative solutions or act as a market facilitator to uh, make some of these opportunities a reality. And as we field tested this guide in Uganda and Ghana in recent months, we did find that these steps are actually pretty broadly applicable beyond financial services. So even when you're not talking about financial services specifically, um, but looking at other digitally enabled opportunities such as ICT for extension, you can really use the same process. So I'm going to walk through some of the steps in a bit more detail. So first, identifying the challenges in the value chain that are hindering uh, you from reaching your project results. So we really expected that this would be the easiest step for most of the readers who are already working in agriculture, but it's a good reminder that we should always be uh, grounding our development, our digital interventions in the development challenge. Second, the guide has a series of questions that help you assess the existing financial services. So this is critical first to see if, if there's already a service, then we can just be easily leveraging it. But if there's not a service or if people aren't able to access it, then asking why can help us to design a better intervention. So for example, in many areas, uh, services are poorly designed in a way that uh, makes them more accessible to men than to women, or there might just be a general lack of trust in banks, and those are things that we should be incorporating into our design. And so then on the third step is really to look at uh, digital financial services that could help, again, either existing or not yet available. We don't want to close ourselves off too soon. Um, that can help. So um, for example, just some of the things that we've seen is if there's currently a lack of transparency that's causing mistrust between value chain actors, then linking in digital payments and connecting those to market pricing information can help. Or we often see that lack of accessible savings products is hindering farmers from being able to smooth out their seasonal, seasonal consumption. and so. Uh, either training them on a digital wallet and how to use that to save or linking their existing savings groups to formal financial institutions or to potential interventions that can help. And then starting on page 33 of the guide, there's a brief quiz to help you assess the state of the digital finance market to see what might be available. And the assumption in this quiz is that most of the information is going to be available either through just in-country observation just by being there and asking people or uh, by online resources that are listed throughout the guide. 
So you may decide to do a more complex assessment later, but we, we found that the few times we've gotten people to really use this, that they've been able to answer the questions pretty easily, even if they're not digital finance experts. And then we, when we have the next step of the important step of actually designing an inter intervention, and we've de categorized these into four very broad types. Uh, and so keeping in mind that always with all of these approaches will likely include cooperation with other USAID partners and or the private sector. Um, and that they're not mutually exclusive. So the first intervention type using the digital finance along the value chain is really the ultimate goal regardless, um, or at least what, uh, what we're focusing on here. Uh, the second, which is uh, about organizing and implementing partners around digital finance solutions, is about how we as USAID implementing partners, as well as our other development partners and donors, can be instrumental in aggregating demand to really spur additional investment into rural areas when necessary. The third is about in implementing ICT-enabled solutions in conjunction with DFS, and so this really encourages the more, especially in more advanced countries, we're seeing more and more um, that digital payments work best when combined with other kind of digital information systems, supply chain management systems. Um, again, kind of going back to Justin's point that this is really a management tool and how can we make this a more ro robust business tool for our farmers. And finally, uh, the fourth intervention type working with um, our colleagues and development partners to impact key constraints is a recognition that when the market is too nascent or there are things holding it back, such as regulation or a lack of adequate consumer protection, that we have a role to play in lobbying, working with the central, government, central bank to fix those or working with the private sector to um, argue for increased investment.